So you did it. You decided to purchase your very first CNC system, or maybe you haven't made the decision yet, but you're weighing the pros and cons of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the hidden costs of building and setting up your first CNC system uh, so you can really understand what you're getting into. Now, first off, I use the Onefinity Woodworker X50, which is a 32 by 32 CNC machine, and it's on the high end of the hobbyist machines. Um, it's been a great machine for me. I really like it. I have a review of it that I'll put up in the uh, card right up here and then also in the description down below. Now, also keep in mind, depending on the version or type of CNC that you buy, some of the things that I'll mention may or may not come with it. For example, with my Onefinity, it did not actually come with the router itself. I had to buy that separate. This is a Makita Palm router that Onefinity recommended. Also, didn't come with the touchscreen. I had to buy that separate. And you can get it with or without the computer module. I chose to go ahead and get it myself. Now, before we go any further, I've told you guys on multiple occasions, I don't like shilling products or anything like that. But this particular video is about the products that you would need to use with a CNC. And I've said it only makes sense that if I'm using a product, it's a good idea to put the link down in the description just so you can find it yourself. And if I'm going to put the link in the description, why not go ahead and make 2% off of it, 3% off of it, if it's something that I use myself. So I am going to mention some products today that I do use, and they will be in the description. Now, if you do choose to buy any of them, I'd appreciate it if you'd actually click on the links and go through there, because as an Amazon affiliate, I do get a little kickback from any purchases that are made through those links. I'm going to spend the majority of the time talking about those things that you might not think about that you need in order to run your CNC machine. First off is a touch probe. Now, I have a separate video where I talk about how a touch probe is actually used. Basically, this is used to find the X, Y, and Z of your workpiece so that when you load your program, it knows exactly where the wood is and where to start cutting. It's the origin point. Um, I've heard some CNC users say that they don't have one and they'll just eyeball it. And that's great. That's fine if that's what you'd like to do. I prefer having a touch probe because it allows me to precisely find the X, Y, and Z. That comes in handy, especially when you're going to be doing tool changes and you have projects that require a variety of different tools. Maybe you're going from a V-bit to a, an end mill. Uh, you'd need to be able to go back to your origin point and know the X, Y, and Z point. Now, the one that I bought was sold by Onefinity, but there are third-party uh, touch probes that you can buy off Amazon and things like that. I'll put a couple links down in the description. So let's talk about dust collection. A CNC is just like any other woodworking tool where sawdust is going to be created. And because of the fact that many times you're going to be boring out pockets, you can create a lot more sawdust with a CNC than with other types of woodworking tools. Now, that's generally not as big of a deal because most of the sawdust created is going to be restricted to the area where your bit is cutting. So as long as you have a good vacuum seal right there, you can limit the amount of sawdust. Now, regarding this sawdust, uh, I recently filmed a video and I wanted my viewers to be able to actually see the cut, so I didn't attach a dust boot, so most of the dust created is actually right here. Now for my needs, I just use this DeWalt shop vac uh, as well as a bucket that I picked up from my home center and uh, this cyclone system that is great at separating the sawdust so it puts much less stress on the filter of your shop vac. Now I use this two and a half inch hose which connects into the dust boot which attaches to my CNC. The CNC that I bought, which is the Onefinity Woodworker X50, didn't come with that dust boot, so that was an additional cost. So this is something that you will need to consider. You may already have uh, a shop vac or some type of dust collection system. Just keep that in mind. Oh, wow. It got cleaned up. Now that we have this out of the way, let's talk about CNC bits. Now, first of all, a couple of these are bits that aren't necessarily associated with my CNC. I just kind of keep them on this handy dandy little French cleat that I've, I've built for my CNC. Uh, for example, this one right here. This is a dado bit. 
that would typically go in a conventional router. I just have it with these. Also, we have a keyhole bit. This is useful for putting keyholes on the back of your work so you can mount it on a wall. Uh, not necessarily something that I use with the CNC, although you can automate that process with a simple toolpath. I have a few bowl bits. These are handy when you're creating bowls, plates, that kind of thing. Good for hogging out a lot of material. These are definitely good bits to have. Next, we have a surfacing bit. This is good for flattening out material. And it's great on a CNC, especially if you don't have a planer and a jointer. You can actually flatten your material on your CNC so you can get a nice flat surface. Next, we're going to have your upcut and downcut bits. This is an upcut bit, which actually pulls the material up, giving you a rougher top surface, but a more precise bottom surface. And I have a variety of different size V bits. These are great for engraving, and they're always handy to have a couple. Uh, it turns out I actually don't use the 20 degree bit as, thought, as much as I thought that I would, but I do use this 90 degree and this 60 degree quite a bit. Next, these are my quarter inch bits. These uh, are worth their weight in gold. On the left, you will see that is the upcut bit. On the right, that's the downcut bit. And the quarter inch bits are handy because they can do a lot of work in a shorter period of time. So these are definitely bits that I recommend that you have. All right, so now let's talk about all the little accessories and things that you're probably going to have to get at some point. Number one, how are you actually going to hold your material, your wood, your acrylic, your plastic, aluminum maybe? How are you going to hold that down to your work surface? Again, this will vary depending on the type of CNC machine that you buy. But if you're using one like I have, which basically just has the CNC set up, not only are you going to have to decide how you want to uh, set up your spoil board, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to hold your material to that spoil board. So the method that I commonly use is blue tape along with CA glue and activator. Now this is actually a four pack that I bought recently. I'm going to link this down in the description below because if you use CA glue in your shop, this is actually a really good deal. Uh, I find of all the links that I put down in my description, this is probably the most popular item that people like. What this does is this allows you to tape both the surface as well as your workpiece. Then you use CA glue, glue and activator uh, to spray it and then press it down. If you do this, then many times there's not any need to have any additional clamps or anything like that. Next, you have a variety of different types of clamps. I actually used these clamps in a recent project. And as you can see here, that was a mistake. I'll put a link in the description below where you can actually see that project being built and how I messed up and actually ran across this clamp right here and almost damaged my bit or my CNC. And then you may just choose, as I have done recently, to simply screw your material down to your spoil board. Now, the downside of that is you will chew up your spoil board eventually, but that's why they call it spoil board or waste board. It is the type of thing that you are going to need to replace every once in a while. Next, you get a good set of calipers. These are cheap, uh, but they do the job. I'm not machining uh, engine parts or anything like that. So as long as I can get fairly accurate results, then this caliper is good enough for me. And then we have Aura Mask. Aura Mask is a material, it's like a thick tape that you cover your workpiece with so that once your CNC is done actually cutting out the design, the cut portion is exposed and so you can paint that. Then you peel the aura mask away and you have either the original color or the original wood grain without the need to do much sanding on your project. So aura mask is very handy. Now I'm not great with aura mask. I've only used it in a couple of projects. So it's something that I still need to practice on, but I've seen several folks on YouTube who use aura mask religiously and they do a great job with it. Now let's take a minute and talk about how you're actually going to fit your CNC into your shop. Um, depending on the CNC, the model that you buy, it may actually come with a table. It may actually come with a frame or a spoil board. Uh, the one Finity that I bought did not. It was just the rails and I had to build everything myself. Now I chose to build my own table out of three quarter inch plywood. Uh, that is uh, four feet by four feet, uh, as well as 
three quarter inch MDF board as my spoil board with T-Track so that I could use clamps to actually hold my material down. Now, another thing to consider is how you're actually gonna move and control your CNC. Uh, I simply use the touch screen right here, uh, but a lot of folks, in fact, probably more online on YouTube use a remote control, okay? I don't actually have a remote control. You might be saying, but Damien, you have a remote control in your hand. This is an Xbox controller. I may be able to plug it up. I'm not sure. I've never tried, but I do have an Xbox. But this is what they look like, all right? I'm not going to put a link in the description for any of these controllers because I've never used them. So I don't want to put a link to something that I've never used. But you may want to get a remote control to jog your CNC. Now, remember when I said I'm not going to mention anything that you'd already have in your shop? I am going to talk about a drill, but more specifically, these sanding discs. Um, I found these on Amazon, and these have been a lifesaver. These are great because they're good for sanding in small areas, and I found them to be, to be very handy uh, getting into the small areas that you might actually uh, create a pocket for with your CNC. So these are actually really handy. And this particular package that I bought goes anywhere from, I want to say 120 up to 2000 grit. So they have a variety of different sizes and several of them in here. Now, another thing that I really like about this is that if you needed to get into some small intricate areas and you just wanted to hand sand, these little discs are great. You can just fold them in half and then use them to, to really kind of get in those nooks and crannies. And I will put those in the description as well. Oh, when you're trying to record, but the shop doggies just need a little loving. And finally, how are you going to design your work? Oh, sorry. Um, when you're designing your work, you're going to need some type of software. Now you can just go out on places like Etsy or southpawdesigns.com and you can download some files for projects. But what if you wanted to actually create your own? You're going to need some type of design software. Now, I prefer to use VCarve Pro myself. It's just the one that I like the best. I do have a review where I talk about three of the major ones, uh, and I'll link that in the description below and in the card, whichever side right is, I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, you'll need some type of software yourself. The three main ones that you'll find are Easel, which is an online software. It's probably the cheapest, but it's a fairly simplified version. Very easy to learn, but uh, you're somewhat limited in what you can do. Then you have kind of the, the mid-range that I think is good for a CNC uh, woodworker, and that's VCarve Pro. You have to have a little bit better knowledge of how um, computers work and how to design in a 3D environment but it's fairly easy for the average person to learn. And then you have Fusion 360, which I believe is much more advanced. Um, in my opinion, uh, Fusion 360 is more for fabrication and it, more engineering and CAD CAM type applications, although you can use it for CNC itself. And again, there's a, a review of all three of those in the description below if you'd like to check those out. Then of course, there are a variety of other items that you might need to have, finishes, paints, uh, sealers, saws, but again, I don't want to go through the time to talk about all the things that you might already have in your shop. We're mainly talking about the things that you might not think that you would need to get up and running with your CNC. So I hope you enjoyed it and please hit that subscribe button below. That really helps to grow this channel and leave a like and a comment. Tell me what things I left off or things that you as a CNC owner find that you need in your shop that maybe I didn't go over. 